Okay, everybody, chapter 3 of the book of Acts. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Of course, praying to Father Jehovah. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes upon him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising Father Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. And all the people saw him walking and praising Father Jehovah. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now as the, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this, or why do you look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? <laughs> Father Jehovah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, Father Jehovah, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let uh, Jesus go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, Jesus, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, Jesus, whom Father Jehovah raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses, and his name, Jesus, through faith in his name, Jesus, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yet the faith which comes through Jesus has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, bless. Um, and the notations on this. Um... At this early point in the history of the church, the Jewish Christians were still praying in the temple. The ninth hour was about 3 p.m. This healing is a demonstration of either the manifestation of the gifts of healings or of the working of miracles, 1 Corinthians 12, 9, and 10. It is an example of the church continuing the kind of healing Jesus did. Most of that Jesus did. Most of the sermons and acts contain four elements, a proclamation that the age of the Messiah, Jesus, has finally come, quotations from the Old Testament to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Messiah, a review of the life and ministry of Jesus, especially his resurrection, and a call to repentance that everybody needs to repent of their sins and ask Jesus to come into their hearts and lives forever as God over their lives. Thank you, Jesus. Healing is by faith in the name of Jesus. In the cultural setting of the Bible, a name could not be separated from the person bearing that name. And the very name, Jesus Christ, means anointed Savior. Therefore, Peter is saying that it was the Messiah, Jesus, in all his fullness who healed the man. Furthermore, the miracle power was not in Peter's faith, but by the faith which comes through, uh, you know, Jesus. See Hebrews 12, 2. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, bless everything. I trust Jesus. Yet now, brethren... 
I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but those things which Father Jehovah foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled Jesus. You know, um, the Christ, Jesus, uh, Jesus, he, Father Jehovah, has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of Father Jehovah, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which Father Jehovah has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, uh, Father Jehovah your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things whatever he says to you. Um, um, and it shall be and I believe that Moses is talking about Jesus. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which Father Jehovah made with our father, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, Father Jehovah, Father Jehovah, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you, and in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Yes, Moses was talking about Jesus. I want to make that abundantly clear. Uh, Old Testament prophecy has a present spiritual fulfillment in the church and a future fulfillment in the second coming of Jesus. Bible prophecy is both realized and unfulfilled. The kingdom of Father Jehovah is both now and later, whom heaven must receive. See Psalms 110.1. Peter reminds the Jewish leaders that the Abrahamic covenant promise of Genesis 12, 1 through 3, shows that Father Jehovah never intended to limit his covenant blessing to the Jewish bloodline Abraham's family. And that is uh, where we're going to, well, we got more time. We're going into chapter 4 now. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead, and they lay hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word about Jesus believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has he has been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom Father Jehovah raised from the dead, Father Jehovah raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole, by him Jesus. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Um, 
other. Different generic distinction, another kind, not of the same nature, form, or class here. Heteros denotes a distinction and an exclusivity, with no second choices, opinions, or options. Jesus, you are the one, you are the only one. There is no heteros, no other. Um, you know, Jesus is the only name that will save. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them to not speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of Father Jehovah to listen to you, more, more than to Father Jehovah you judge, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified uh, Father Jehovah for what had been done. For the man was over forty years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to Father Jehovah with one accord and said, Father Jehovah, you are God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David said, Why did the nations rage at the and the people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against Father Jehovah and his Christ, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For truly your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, Father Jehovah, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand, Father Jehovah, and your purpose, Father Jehovah, determined before to be done. Now, Father Jehovah, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word, Father Jehovah, by stretching out your hand, Father Jehovah, to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus because Jesus is God incarnate. And when they prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of Father Jehovah with boldness. Jesus, Jesus, bless Jesus. Um, now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and the great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any one among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as any one had need. And Hosus, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, was a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And we are going to stop right there. That is the end of chapter 4. Uh, Jesus bless you all. I'll talk to you all later. Jesus bless. Uh,